Daring bandits continue kidnappings and havoc across Zamfara, Niger, Kaduna, Katsina, Sokoto and Kebi states. The Nigerian state is so far unable to put a halt to their actions. We'll find out why from a security expert. The Irigwe people of uh, Plateau State accused Fulanese of setting more than 250 homes on fire and destroying their farmlands. Both sides will be speaking to us this morning. And suspended head of police intelligence response team Abakari gets re replacement in Tsunji Disu. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Good morning. Good to have you here. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Usaogi Ogbon. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we hope that we have a very interesting run this very beautiful Tuesday morning. Indeed. And um, we have been talking about the issue of um, the case of Hush Puppy for a long time. And we saw how, you know, U.S. court documents showed links to um, the former commissioner of police. Uh, we're talking about the person of Abba Kiari. Uh, the conversations, uh, you know, continue to stir people's emotions and conversations. And we heard from Frank Uba when he put out a press statement yesterday that there's a replacement for him, and it's a person of Tsunji Disu. Um, he went on to say, you know, this is someone who has been, you know, the former commander of the Rapid Response Squad, RRS in Lagos. He was the deputy commissioner of, you know, state uh, of police. He was the department's... Department of Operations Force Headquarters in Abuja. He had previously served in state CID River State as deputy head of the unit. He went on and on and on to list out all his credentials. But when you take a look at that of Abakari, it, it's not really different. You know, these people take courses even abroad. You know, they have a first degree, they go on to bag a master's degree. So it's on paper, they seem fantastic, like fantastic candidates. But the question really has been about character and integrity. Those things you won't find on paper. You know, we heard yesterday um, one of the lawyers on, of the press, Mr. Um, Tunde Kolaole, um, making allegations and claims about how some you know, people in the high ranks of the police force were corrupt. But I had to quickly stop him there to say, we don't have evidence of that, but when people tell you their experiences in the police force, you really wonder, do they really have the authorization to do that? And if it's been going on for how long, it makes you wonder, it seems that they do, you know. So right now, Tsunji Disu um, has replaced Abakiari. Um, he's been charged to, you know, the usual with press statement, they'll tell you, oh, you're charged to exercise your duties with integrity and all of that. But it's left to be seen just how that will end. Oh, well, um, so my thoughts with regards to this, I, I, you know, I saw this yesterday and I'm sure I wasn't the only one. There's a lot of people who see this as great news and that is mostly because uh, Tunji Disu has shown in the time that he was in charge of the RRS here in Lagos to be an exemplary officer. Um, he's one person that was a people's favorite um, all over um, well, Twitter before he was uh, suspended. Um, he, of course, uh, in carrying on his duties, was always very, very, um, um, he was always very, very professional. He was always uh, one to interact with the people. He was always one to always uh, give feedback on any of their operations. You know, whenever the RRS uh, was called in to respond to anything, you know, Tunijisu had a very, very great, uh, you know, communication with, you know, the Nigerian people on every platform that he had. And he has shown, you know, and I'm, I'm not sure if there's any records of, you know, corruption or anything wrong, con you know, concerning Tunijisu's uh, uh, career. And he was missed, you know, eventually when he... Um, step down as the head of the RRS and, and move somewhere else. I'm not sure where, but he was missed, you know. And and so, you know, I saw a lot of people say yesterday that you know this is the first time that they felt great with a move made by the Nigerian police, a move made by, by um, you know the uh, Inspector General of Police or you know Police Service Commission. Um, and so, it's great news uh, from my perspective, and I'm sure from a lot of other people, because of Tunji Disu himself. Any other name that we may have seen there, yeah, we probably would have had the same thoughts, you know, that you just shared now that, okay, well, you know, a lot of, have a lot of records, they've gone for a lot of courses, but still the same rotten system. Tunji Disu is an example of when people say, well, not all policemen are bad, you know, there's some bad eggs in the system, but there's some really good cops. He has lived that life and the time that he has been in service with the RRS has shown that, you know, there truly are some really, really great um, um, Nigerian policemen with no actual... 
dent in his record uh, that I'm aware of, except, you know, maybe if we, if we start digging a lot further, we might see. But I, I really, really doubt. And that is because of the way that he presented himself and the way that he ran the RRS. It's not been the same thing since he left. You know, and you can, you can tell, you can almost tell that it's not been the same. Um, you know, the, the emotions around the Rapid Response Squad have not been the same thing since Tunji Jisoo um, left. So um, I think it's a really, really good move uh, for the image of the um, intelligence response team or what they're called. It's a really good move for, you know, the Nigerian police uh, putting somebody, you know, like Tunji Jisoo there. And we hope that, you know, there is, you know, some sincerity with the way that the IRT works. I hope that he also is able to carry some of the, you know, attitude and the professionalism that he used to run the Rapid Response Squad into the IRT. Um, you know, one of the fears that people would always have, two last things I'll say, one of the fears people would always have is um, the way that they, they say, oh, you know, no matter how great you are as a person, when you move into a corrupt system, the system either, you know, corrupts you or makes it difficult for you to work. So I'm hoping that his personality and his character and um, professionalism as an officer will be able to transform the IRT and, you know, be able to, you know, make them more professional. Let, let, let us ha have less of these stories that we hear concerning the IRT and, you know, kick, kick out the bad eggs. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, you know, let's also not forget, and it's, it's, it's regular behavior for Nigerians, that once a person is suspended, we, you know, go back home and sleep. No, that's not where this should end. There should be proper investigation, like I believe that they've started, the panel that have, has been set up. There should be investigation. And if um, Abakari has been found guilty here, yeah, forget the FBI owns self here. Yeah for, you know, um, the crimes that he has been, you know, accused of against the Vincent Chibuzo fellow and every other crime that were supposedly allegations. Uh, the 41 million that, you know, he allegedly took from that businessman, uh, the um, woman in Enugu who says that her husband was killed, who was, you know, claimed to be an Amber or a kidnapper, and, you know, they have been in control of their property and many other cases like that from the same Abakari. If these things are, you know, are he's found uh, guilty of these things, then he should, um, you know, pay the, you know, the price here in Nigeria. Then we can now talk about, you know, they can, how can happen um, hand, hand, uh, side by side, the FBI case also against him. Because the FBI case is not, you know, that's not gossip. It's not, you know, whispers. These things, I believe, not at all. Happen. Over a 150 page document, yeah. you know, with facts, evidence of phone calls, Absolutely. records, everything. So, and also, um, we saw proof of about 20,000 US dollars yes. that, you know, Hush Puppy paid into the account of Abakari. Yeah. So, it, it shouldn't end now. Nobody should go to sleep because we, well, he has been suspended. No, that's not where it ends. Okay, so um, we're still, you know, talking about cybercrime this morning. And we, if you remember the name of uh, uh, Ismail Mustafa, also known as Mofa, he was very popular because he was arrested uh, by the EFCC for money laundering, alleged, you know, many other crimes. And um, he was on the Instagram live of Daddy Freeze, a popular um, radio presenter in Lagos. And uh, on that Saturday Instagram live, they were both talking about the whole situation. And uh, Mofa said... When Hush Poppy was arrested, you know, he was opening up to Freeze, telling him that he began to receive calls and even from EFCC, operatives of the EFCC, um, according to him, called him and told him to delete his social media um, pages and keep a low profile so that he doesn't also get into the uh, spotlight and, you know, all the um, investigations, you know, open up. You know, but when he said that, you know, people became, became agitated to say, this is almost what we're seeing in the case of Hush Poppy, where someone who is who is a self-confessed fraudster now seem to have friends in high places especially in law enforcement who now seem to have their back because if he he say that if he said that um people from the efcc called him to warn him it seems obviously they're looking out for him but we saw a statement from the efcc um yesterday saying that's that's not true that the efcc um was prosecuting that case and they would never put out a statement asking um Mofa to um keep a low profile to avoid being in the heat but we know that obviously if this ever happened it was never an official statement made to him this might be an official or two who probably said that we, we don't have the facts but that's what the likelihood is you know so EFC has put out a statement i don't see how much of uh, of of you know a calm that has given to the nigerian people on this matter um you know and for me um good thing that the efcc has responded um it could really you know, you know like you've said you know really just be him running his mouth you know it's possible that nothing like that ever happened there's also the possibility that they actually did happen uh because of well you know the peculiarities of being in nigeria and the kind of things that you hear and you, you know you're not shocked 
Um, there's those possibilities. Um, it makes you question um, what really the case against him was back then that the EFCC was investigating. It makes you wonder, you know, if you know, it was the, e the FBI that had carried out an investigation, if he would have walked free. Um, but, of course, that's not accusing him of anything. Um, the EFCC has carried out the investigations. They said he, she, his, uh, he doesn't have, you know, a crime to answer for at that time. Um, but like they've said, you know, they're still investigating. Let's see how that goes. Um, but, you know, my concern with all of this is, you know, how we, you know, well, how Nigerians give um, people who really should be nobodies, you know, you know, make them celebrities and make them, you know, popular for absolutely no reason. Um, because he is not, you know, there's no actual value that he gives to the Nigerian society or the Nigerian populace. Uh, same thing with Freeze, you know, why are we having this... Um, conversations, you know, and, you know, not also forgetting that Freeze himself was in Dubai with Hosh Puppy, you know, making videos with his, you know, his spouse or his wife or his girlfriend um, and eating and, and laughing at Nigerians in the same in the same Dubai and saying that Nigerians should, instead of them to be begging Hosh Puppy to, to employ their fathers as drivers, you know, the said that's the same Freeze now that we're speaking about that is interviewing Monfa. So these things uh, for me, you know, I feel like, you know, I feel like uh, Nigerians give certain people some level of popularity that they don't deserve in any way. So good luck to Mamfa, good luck to, you know, Freeze, good luck to also the EFCC. If there's an actual case, then I hope that it comes to light. If there's no case, then um, these persons really don't deserve, you know, so much of Nigerians' conversations. And they are not in any way the people that should represent the moral compass that Nigeria should, you know, be moving with or, you know, should be working with. A lot of young Nigerians who want to see People like, you know, some of the people we've spoken about this morning, the S.A. Brumers in the Olympics. There are a lot of Nigerians who want to see people who are doing very well in um, um, sports and in information technology and in medicine and in engineering and whatnot. Um, and those are the people that we should be looking, you know, at. Not, you know, people who we aren't sure exactly where their wealth, you know, comes from and, you know, turn them to celebrities all of, you know, overnight. I, I don't, I, I really don't um, enjoy those, those people. Anyway, so let's uh, talk quickly sports. Uh, yesterday I was saying that I would not be disappointed if Nigeria doesn't win anything at the Olympics. S.A. Bruma is one person who has eventually won a gold medal in the long jump event. 6.9 meters, I believe that she jumped. And also we're expecting something from, um, actually there's a confirmation about gold or silver for Blessing Oborududu. Uh, Obo, I hope I pronounced her name right. Well, congratulations to the both of them. Um, it is finally, you know, some medal for Nigeria in Tokyo. Uh, these two women uh, have done Nigeria really, really proud. And, you know, we, of course, would absolutely celebrate them. I like that it's also coming from women. Um, um, absolutely. Uh, so we will celebrate them this morning and, you know, say that I hope that she actually gets the gold because she still has a chance of changing that silver to gold. She's, I think she's confirmed to win a silver. But if um, in her next fight she uh, gets victory then she will be winning the gold so and her name once again blessing oburududu um also with the sa brume uh -huh. i think we still have divine uh, oduduru still competing uh, he qualified for the next um, um race and so he also you know is a favorite to maybe win any of the medals bronze silver or gold uh, so congratulations to the both of them and we can't wait to receive them home you know shouldn't also take away the criticism for our sports ministry for how the Nigerian Olympics team fared. Yeah, I'm really proud of Messi Brume, really. You see, you see now what our headline reads, Nigeria wins first medal in Tokyo. When, you know, the victory comes, it comes to the body, the group. But yeah. if she's lost out, it'll be Essie Brume loses out on. But it's just a reality. Yeah. People love to buy into success, you know. Um, it's good for Essie Bruma, like I mentioned. She's had a history of wins. Um, 2019 Doha, she won bronze as well. Now won bronze at the Tokyo Olympics. Good one, and we love to see it. Absolutely. And of course, she's following the footsteps of Choma Junwa, who also won, you know, um, in the long jump event many, many years ago. So um, let's hope that any promises made to her will be fulfilled in due time. Well, um, so let's also hope that it's, we're not winning um, medals because of promises. So I feel like we should develop our sports industry to a place where uh, people like, for example, Simon Biles is not winning because Joe Biden is going to promise that mm -hmm. house. Yeah, I don't. You know, so they get endorsements, they get sponsorship from brands, they get some of all of that. That that. I, th I think it's almost be belittling all her experience and effort to say that she's winning because of promises. Like why? Why not? No. I mean, that's her career. That's her life. That's, yeah, yeah, but it's not. It's not. So, so this is what I'm saying. Our, our, our athletes should shouldn't be going to the Olympics. As I'm working as hard as they can because, well, 
you know, the government will make promises. So I, I feel what like I'm saying the, the, is you can't industry, say that that's their motive. That's, that's where I'm going. Well, you just said, let's hope the promises made to her will not be... Uh, you know, will On not my be, personal uh, opinion, not that that's the reason why she's competing. That's not the reason the she's compete, exactly. competing, no doubt. But at the same time, that shouldn't even be part of the conversation, that promises will be made to her. I'm saying that we should. I, I hope that we develop our sports industry to a place where there's brands who actually want to associate with you, want to make you the ambassadors when you win. Yes, you will win and you, you know, take home that victory. It would be a part of your life forever. But let it be that there is more. There's, there's Adidas. There's, if there's any low Nigerian brands that want to associate with you and make you a brand ambassador, make a lot of money from those type of endorsements. And you are 100% sure that you will um, when you win a medal at the Olympics. Relying on government promises has always never been the right way to go in, for Nigeria. I doubt that they are relying on government promises anyway. Oh, wow. Let's take a break here and we'll return to join our guest to analyze today's papers.